Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of macro photography, focusing on two unlikely stars, the vibrant hyacinth and the agile jumping spider. Let's introduce our model for today, Missy, a young female regal jumping spider. Scientifically known as Phidippus regius, she is a captivating and relatively large species of jumping spider, often kept as a pet by arachnid enthusiasts. Distinguished by its striking colorization, this spider is a visual delight. They can grow up to two centimeters in length, making them one of the larger species of jumping spiders. Known for their remarkable jumping ability, these spiders are also highly intelligent, displaying curiosity and the ability to learn from their experiences. They have large forward facing eyes that provide excellent vision for spotting prey and for interacting with their human caretakers. This little spider is a spiderling, I'd say it's less than a centimetre in size and it's my new jumping spider that I have had from Spoodernest.com. Absolutely beautiful, we're going to be photographing her today. But now let's talk about the scene that we are going to put her onto. Hyacinths are a fragrant flowering plant that typically blooms in early spring. It produces dense spikes of flowers that can vary in colour, including shades of blue, purple, pink, white and yellow. The flowers appear on stalks above strap-like leaves, adding vibrant colour and sweet scent to gardens and indoor settings during its flowering season. Hyacinths with their rich colours and intricate textures make for the perfect backdrop. And jumping spiders, though small, are full of character. Together they create a captivating subject for our macro photography adventure. So if you want to follow along with your pet jumper spider or your praying mantis because it does work with mantises then run out now and grab yourself a hyacinth from a supermarket because they are currently in bloom and in season but they won't be there for long. But we are going to be using the hyacinth and our jumping spider to create images like this. And as we go along, I'll explain why I believe the hyacinth is one of the best flowers for your jumping spider images. So first of all, we need to set up a scene. If you've got a hyacinth like this one just here, in a pot, you're good to go. You can just put your jumping spider on it and you can let her run around. But a lot of people have hyacinths in the garden. So I'm going to approach it from the angle that you have hyacinths in the garden and you can't dig them up. That's where we want to break one off. Here's one I've already broken off and I took this off two days ago. This is one of the other reasons why I like hyacinths. Unlike some other flowers where you cut the stem and you put them onto your macro setup, after a couple of hours they droop. Hyacinths just don't droop for days. We could still use this quite happily. I'm not going to though, we are going to be using a new one because I have this one here that is unfortunately bending over and breaking. So that makes for the perfect one for us to use in our photography. So you go out to your garden, you break off a stem of hyacinths. That's good for at least two to three days of photographing subjects on it. They're absolutely brilliant for that. Now let's set up our scene. For me, I like to use the Platypod gear. There's a link in the description if you want to check out Platypod. But what we're going to do is we're going to take a Platypod Extreme and I'm going to attach a ball head to it. Now if you are a regular viewer of the channel, you will have seen this setup hundreds of times before. So I do apologize for boring you. I'm going to take a platy disc and I'm going to attach a mini super clamp to that disc. And then that will go onto our ball head and our hyacinth, which I'm going to snap off a little bit shorter, will then go into our mini super clamp. If you notice the way it's drooping, most hyacinths do this. So to correct that, what we're going to do is loosen our ball head and correct it so that the hyacinth is going vertically up. And then when we release the horizontal panning on our ball head, we can just turn that flare to any angle. So no matter which way our jump spider is facing, we can get a shot of her. Hyacinths are great to use as backgrounds as well. So we can get this other hyacinth and place it in the background so that we don't have dark areas in our background. However, if you have the background textures from my website, we can also use those. That's what I'm going to go with on this video. So I'm going to grab this texture here. This is a nice pink texture that is going to go great with our hyacinth. Since we are using a female jumper spider, we are using pink throughout this entire photo shoot. So we just place an elbow, this is the platypod elbow, onto our platypod, making sure that's secure. We can then place another super clamp onto the elbow. Then we can place our background into that setup. Right, so there we go. We have our platypod setup. We have the hyacinth in the middle where we're able to rotate it no matter where the spider is, we can rotate it. And then we have a texture card in the background that's roughly the same 
color as the hyacinth. Again, you can also put another hyacinth flower in the background to fill out your background so you've not got black areas when you're photographing the spider. This is a new spider, so I want to make some precautions. I'm going to get some kitchen toweling and I'm going to place that down onto my desk. And then our platypus setup will go on like that. Now the reason for that is I'm recording in a studio and it's quite dark apart from the video light. So if the spider jumps off, it's not going to be on a dark desk. It's going to be on some bright kitchen toweling. Plus it gives some padding so the spider doesn't hurt herself if she panics and jumps off. I haven't photographed this spider before, so I'm not 100% sure how she's going to react to me. I just want to make some precautions. One of the precautions we want to do as well is because the spider is quite small and we haven't handled her too much, I'm going to take a background card. That way, if she does try to run off, I can put the background card in front of us. She'll walk onto the background card. I can pick her up and put her back into the enclosure. Right, so let's talk about our camera for this shoot. So for this shoot, I am going to be using the EM1 Mark II with the 60 millimeter lens. I have the Goldox V350 and this funny looking contraption on top is the diffuser and that's a Cygnus Tech diffuser. Links to all this gear is on my website and there's a link in the description. To start with, we're going to keep things simple. We're going to use TTL on our flash. I'm going to go to 1 200th of a second F10 at ISO 200. Now this is an active young spider so I don't think we're going to have an opportunity to focus stack it. If we do, I will certainly try but we are going to go for single shots for this very first shoot. Once the spider gets a bit older and starts to get used to us we will be able to get a focus stacked image of this spider quite easily without risking her life and stressing her out so now it's time to get missy out and this is missy the second there we go so there she is and i'm going to offer the flower give her a little bit of a nudge there we go she's just jumped on it this is another reason why i do like these higher sims because the spider's like going inside on the stem and you're able to shoot through at the spider so missy is inside the flower she's on the stem and patience is crucial in macro photography take your time to observe the spider's behavior you need to wait for that perfect moment when she looks up towards the camera or displays an interesting behavior now we can double up on our time as i've said before in previous videos i don't like spending too much time photographing my spiders you can stress them out so you need to get the image done quickly if she does stress out if the spider doesn't stress out you're good to go for an hour two hours as much as you want to but noticing the behavior of the spider is crucial in noticing if she's stressing out so far she's just exploring and that's great this gives us now an opportunity to test our camera setup so what i'm going to do i'm going to photograph the edge of a flower here with the background in place to see what that looks like that's looking okay. Let's see what happens if we put a flower in the background. Yeah, so you've got different options that you can do. I have a spare flower. If I decide that I want the flower in the background, we can do that. All we've got to do now is wait for Missy to poke her head out. We might get a nice image of her with this. I do like hyacinths. They're, they're brilliant. I'm going to take a quick snapshot of her just to double check my settings. Now, this ain't going to be the best image in the world of a jumping spider. There we go. But that just tests all of our settings we can come and have a look at our image and say oh yep yeah, that's fine that's brilliant that's what we want we start our photo shoot and what i'm looking for i'm looking for a specific image i'm hoping she's going to remain on the inside of the flower rather than the outside because what i want to do i want to photograph her in between petals so that there's depth in our image and that's another thing i wanted to talk about why i like hyacinths hyacinths are great they're a couple of inches in width, which doesn't sound much, but in macro terms, that's like a mile. It gives you lots of depth. How we really want an image is we want some foreground that's out of focus. We want our spider in focus and then the background out of focus. But to get that image, you're at the mercy of your subject. If the subject doesn't want to play ball, you're not going to get it. Let's get some images of Missy now. Well, that didn't work very good. <laughs> just as i pressed the button she moved and again you will get it a lot where missed shots and that don't worry about it just carry on shooting she's moving around very very slowly which is a good thing that means she's not stressed and also when i take a picture she's not flinching when the flash goes off that's very good i think this spider is going to be a great model particularly when she grows up So at the moment, I'm just taking pictures, get her used to the flash, see how she behaves, and I'm happy to say she's behaving very well. I'm going to have a, a different type of play here. I'm going to take 
the old flower they have. I'm going to hold that in the background while I take pictures of Missy. Another advantage of the uh, the OM system cameras is you can hold them with one hand. Spin around. Have a look here. Don't want to hold it too close because she's bound to try and jump onto it. So even if you don't have any background cards, you can still do this. Let me show you what happens if you don't have any background cards or flower. You see there, you've got a black background. I just don't like that. I'm going to put my card back in, but I'm going to use the other side. It's got pink and brown, so it goes like a dark brown to light and then to pink. We're going to use that one next. And it's one thing I'm always doing is playing around with the backgrounds. You never know what's going to happen. If you don't know, just try it. We're using digital files, so it doesn't cost you any money just to experiment. So she's gone onto the stalk in the middle of the flower. She's looking up, which means I'm not going really going to get a shot of her. I was hoping there'd be a hole where she could peer through. Let me get a side on view though. Let's have a look at there. See if we can get a side on. She is coming up though. I was hoping she would carry on going the way she was. So I was going to take a series of shots, but she didn't. She turned around. I've just got to wait. So I'm going to take a picture just to show where she is. So she's there. She's going up the stalk. And we've just got to wait and be patient. There's no point poking her or prodding her. She'll go where she wants to. You've just got to be patient. Yeah, that's like what I was looking for. You see there, we have foreground that's out of focus. We have background that's out of focus and the spider in focus. So she's currently wiping her eyes. It's quite funny when they do that. Their little pepper pups come up and they go like this. They're like a, a cat washing their head. It's quite funny to see. So I think that's going to be it for this particular photo shoot. So yeah, we've got some great shots of Missy there. And like I said before, patience is what you need. You need to wait for the perfect moment of when the spider looks towards the camera or displays some sort of interesting behavior. And quite often they do stop and look at you during a shoot. And that's when you need to be ready to get the shot. Post-processing can enhance your photo significantly, adjusting the contrast, clarity, and vibrance to make your subject pop. But remember, the goal is to enhance, not alter the natural beauty of your subjects. Here are the photos from this photo shoot. All of these images have been edited using my macro presets that are available from my website. So if you do want to grab yourself a pack of presets, there's a link in the description. It does help to support this channel and helps me to bring you this free content. Macro photography opens up a world of beauty, turning tiny jumpy spiders and delicate hyacinths into subjects of awe and wonder. It's incredible to see a whole new world in these tiny details we usually overlook. And remember, beauty can be found in the smallest of places. You just have to look closely. If you enjoyed this tiny journey, hit the like button and subscribe for more. Keep exploring and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for sticking to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, then please subscribe and click the like button. It really does help out the channel. I want to thank my Patreon supporters for their continued support in supporting me and this channel. If you're interested in joining Patreon, then check in the description below this video for a link to Patreon. If you want to continue watching my macro journey, then click one of the videos in front of you now.